All right, hello, good day, and welcome. Today, we're gonna talk about approvals. We're gonna understand how to build them in Flow Designer, some of the dependencies or prerequisites for them, and how to test them. So I'm gonna use a basic flow to do this, a basic use case called a transportation request. So let's get started. So I have a, a basic app that I had created. Um, I hope you're familiar with App Engine. App Engine is how you can build apps lightning fast. And uh, there's a lot of tutorials on those. So if you want to build an app, go ahead and do that. You can do this against any other record type. I was actually going to do this against the problem management, but I thought I'd highlight a quick little app that I had built. So the use case that I wanted to share is actually called a transportation request. And it's a very basic use case where an employee needs to get a ride to the airport or somewhere, and they can request a ride from their organization, and they can choose a vehicle type, like economy, a van if there's multiple people, or even a limousine if that's required. And what we want to do is that if the person selects a limousine, then we're going to want their manager to approve it. So that's the use case we're going to follow. We're going to start off here inside the service portal. I have just built a really basic service catalog item for this, and it's a transportation request. So it's tied to the user table, which is super cool. So um, technically, I'm just going to do this for myself. You can actually get a ride for somebody else if you wanted to. Um, make the priority you know, moderate, and I am going to select a limo. And where am I going? I'm just going to pick a destination here. That's that's where I'm headed. This is my request type. Now, if I submit this, at this point, there's no approval process established. So maybe I get the limo I want, and it's just me, and I'm going to the airport, and why do I need a limo to go to the airport, right? So now what we're going to do is to go look at the flow designer and see how can we make an approval for this. So I'm going to go back here to my standard view here and if you're not familiar with getting to the flow designer you just type it in in the navigator and you'll, you'll see it and you can click on that and I have it open already it's right here so we're in the flow designer and we're gonna make a brand new flow and I'm gonna make a transportation request approval so it named it very basic uh, run as user who initiates session is Fine. I use system user a lot. Um, I can talk you through that soon. This is not a full flow designer tutorial. Um, I'm just going to keep this one as the user who initiates the session. And I'm just going to put the approval flow. All right. So once you have your, your flow off the ground here, we're going to start with the trigger. This is where they all start, right? So our trigger is going to be when the record gets uh, created or updated. Um, and that is when it first gets created, like I showed you in that initial screen, the service portal, um, that's usually when it's going to be run. Uh, however, maybe somebody is starting off with an economy car and switches to a limo. Maybe we want to adapt to that too. So I'm going to do both. It's asking you for the table. And so this is where you... Uh, can select the table. So here's my uh, transportation request table. And then the conditions. This is where you can add that vehicle type condition. So we'll say vehicle type is a limo or vehicle type changes to a limo. So I think that'll work pretty good. So that's our, our basic condition. Should we have a transportation request? Then we have the, the limo there. So now that we have that in place, let's request the approval from the rider's manager. So once you click on uh, the actions here, you can choose the different types and write in the, the core actions here. If you start doing approval in the filter, it comes right up. So it's very, very basic. So once we're here, um, it's asking here in this area, which record and which uh, do you want to get the approval for? So I'm gonna choose a transportation record. This is on the right. This is where the power of flow designer really kicks in. This is dynamic, this is low code. 
this is easy to do i just want an approval on that main record that i just created that that request so i'm just going to drag it in there so now that's what we're running our approval against um, if i didn't mention and if you didn't know the approval engine the foundation of approvals and how they work in service now is fantastic it's powerful it's comprehensive and it covers what you need to get approvals in your flows so i might this might look simple but that's because it is all the hard work has been done on the back end here with service now so now we're down to our approval rule here what's the approval rule i'm just going to use any one approves so if you notice there's several you can choose there um, a percentage of approvals number of approvers so if you're doing an approval group say there's five people that can approve this and you use that group if any one of them approves it'll go through or if you wanted to get more specific you can say at least two need to approve all that can be managed here i'm just going to say anyone approves and then here it's now a field is empty we need to put in there who do we want to approve it as mentioned we can select groups from here if we wanted to do a group we can look through the users and add a specific user but we want this to be dynamic dynamic meaning the person who the, the writer's manager needs to approve it so if we go back to our data pill selector over here our our, our data selector you can expand the, the main record, scroll down to writer. And writer is tied to the user table. So now I'm drilling into that table. So if you notice, we're able to dot walk or crawl through the different tables across the platform using this interface. So the writer actually has, the user table has a manager field. So I'm going to drag the manager in there. So if you notice, again, no code, it's all dynamic. So I drilled into the original record. I looked for the writer. I found the manager and I drug it in. That's who we want to approve. So that's perfect right there. Okay. So we have the trigger and what's going to uh, prompt the approval. And then it's going to send it to the manager. So we're going to stop there with the flow and maybe at the end we'll come back and do some some logic like if it's approved do this if it's rejected do that we can do that here with some flow logic here in a moment but before we build that out we're actually at the point that we can review the prerequisites or you know or and also the uh, dependencies as well as test it so I'm just going to actually save that right now and I'll activate it, even though we're not going to test immediately. I have that ready. So there we go. I'll get pretty basic approval flow there. So now we're going to go back to our standard interface, platform interface here. And let's take a look at the dependencies I was talking about, these prerequisites. So one is in order to ask for the writer's manager to approve the user table that houses all your users needs to have manager populated for that specific user now it is the best practice that um, let's see i have a users with manager list here it is the best practice that organizationally um, your org chart is imported and managed here in ServiceNow. so there's always somebody in that field uh, no matter how how high up the chain you go uh, everybody has a leader except for the very tip top of the organization but all the standard employees should have a manager supervisor some kind of hierarchy in place uh, if you notice in our demo data here if i click on all there's a bunch of them with that don't have it so uh, fortunately there were some that did and i also went ahead and uh, did a couple uh, manually so if you notice uh, beth has a manager right and um, I didn't use her so I need to make sure as back as a prerequisite maybe if I were to run this now it may not work I think if I look back at my uh, my request here so the writer Omar I'm not in that list if I were to run this now I wouldn't get it wouldn't work because there's no I don't have a manager so understand that prerequisite that dependency you need to have that so that's number one the users need to have a manager 
in that field. The second one is uh, if you did uh, groups. So I think I was mentioning the flow. Instead of an individual, you can put a group. So if you're going to put a, a group, you just want to make sure, one, the group exists. So I'm going to show you some, some groups here. I don't even know if there's any approval groups. I think like the cab is an approval group, so I don't have one. So um, yeah, cab approval, you see that? So just as an example, that's a change advisory board. It has six members. So you need to make sure there's members in the group if you're gonna have the uh, approval go to a group. Make sure they're all in there. Um, and another component is this is going to send it via email as well. There's an out of box notification that just sends an email out to, to these approvers. Make sure there's, they have email addresses too. So that's the other prerequisite to take advantage of that um, automatic notification that you don't even have to build. It's just part of the platform. You're going to want to go ahead and make sure there's email addresses for those individuals as well. So. Um, those are those are two of the uh, dependencies that I uh, can identify right off the bat that I think are important. And so noticing that Beth did not have a, um, or that Omar didn't have a manager, but Beth does, and, and that's me, I think I'm going to change my submission from Omar to Beth, All right, just for testing purposes. So at this point, because I created the flow and I activated it and right now the condition will be met because the vehicle type is a limo and the rider we know has a manager this should kick off the approval flow so I think I'm gonna give it a shot Okay, this is a good sign. So not only was the record created, this, this uh, transportation request, but if you notice with me being Beth's manager, I have an approver, approval waiting for me. So that's a good sign. So now that helps us look into testing because how do we check that it works? So there's one way, make yourself the manager, submit for somebody and let it come in and you'll see an approval there. Very good sign. Um, but I would start off here. I'm gonna show off the, the actual executions that do help keep track of you know, how the flow is progressing. So I clicked on that and drilled into this record here and it's showing the, the progress so far. It does show waiting, and but it looks like the condition was met and the approval went through and it's green that it's waiting is a good sign. So it went out and what it's waiting for is a response to the approval. So that's that's great sign there. All right. So another way to test is come out to the platform interface, and there's a, a my approvals list that uh, that resides here. Um, I have this light in the way, and if you notice here, there's one directly assigned to myself. But if you want to, if you're an admin, what you can do is just get rid of the filter and sort by, you know, the most recent on top and you'll see them coming in. Even if you're not the, the approver or you're not in that field, you're not the manager, you'll still see them come in. Just like you see all of these where I'm not the approver, you see them here. So here's another good way to test that the approval got sent out. And you can actually right click and approve or reject from here to see if the flow continues. So we're going to look into that in a, in a moment. Um, another way that's, that helps it be kind of uh, efficient and a way to is just to add a related list. So if I go to configure related list here, I am actually going to go to approvers and add it to my view one of the related lists and so down here now you're seeing the approvers as they come through so 
I think I showed you this record earlier. Let's see if I refresh it. All right, and now I have a related list here. Let's go look at the record. So this is the workspace view. So if you're testing and you're using something like the workspace view, just like this, um, you're gonna be able to just navigate. So it's keeping you from having to even go to that platform interface or that classic UI. What you're doing is you can submit it via the service portal or submit it here and then you'll see the approval show up in the related list so you can test your automation staying kind of compact so i hope those are helpful tips on how to how to get those tested um, the final test that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to uh, approve or reject it to see it complete because we're still in this waiting state so the last thing i'll do is go ahead and um uh, we'll just approve it here we can view there it is i'm just going to hit approve so it comes off my list as the as the approving person and now I have no pending approvals no problem there and if I go back to the flow designer and refresh that now it's completed so that was a quick highlight of how to establish a trigger condition to get an approval some of the prerequisites uh, the independencies that you need for them to, to work successfully and a few ways to test them to kind of see that they're going through. Uh, what we can do next time is explore more logic that if it's rejected or if it's approved, let's do some other fun stuff. But I think this is going to be great to get an overview of how approvals work on ServiceNow. Thanks.